Maroon on multiple occasions, and he's, he's one of these people in my life who I actually have a hard time identifying exactly where in my professional life I met him. It seems like I've known him that whole time. But what the, the image that comes to me and I was thinking about this morning as I was reflecting on what I was going to share with you was um, the first time that I went to visit uh, Mumia. And since Mumia and Maroon were in the same facility, of course, I was going to visit Maroon also. And unlike Mumia, who came out with his hands free, and although we were visiting behind the glass, we were able to greet each other by pounding on the glass. Maroon, who's, I would say, smaller than I am, was brought, up, brought out in leg chains, body chains, and his arms cuffed to his body like this, chained to his body. And he had to shuffle into the visiting room. And when I say visiting room, I mean a cubicle, because we're on two sides of a glass. And this is an attorney visit, okay? Mm. And through that entire visit, he had to sit like this, crammed up. And I asked one of the guards if they could free at least one hand so that he might be able to write something. And the guard said, no, it's too dangerous. Mm. He's thinking, now where is this almost 70-year-old man who's in body change and shackles in a locked room yes. behind glass yes. with two guards on the back side of that door mm -hmm. going to go? Mm -hmm. But that's the level of hysteria and madness that this barbaric system is about. That's what we're doing to Maroon. Despite that, his spirit is unbroken, and that is remarkable in and of itself. I come into the room, and I'm, you know, I want to ask, how you doing, brother? What's been going on? First thing is, what's happening, sister? How you doing? How was that drive? And I'm like, how's the drive? I want to know, how's he doing? He's the one who's like this, right? But he's all concerned about me, what's happening in the street, how's the movement going, how are other political prisoners doing? And that's a testament of who he is. Many of you know that Marilyn Buck was my client and good friend for decades. Yes. yes. And when Marilyn came home, the first letter that I got was from Maroon asking how she was doing because she was dying at my home. And he wanted to know what did she need, let her know that she was loved and cared for and adored by himself and so many other political prisoners. And then when she did pass away, when she made that transition, the first letter that I got, again, was from Maroon, writing this very touching piece of poetry in tribute to her, because that's who he is. That solitary confinement and the, the madness of the state can never break his spirit, can never tear apart his humanity. But that's not the experience for so many people who are in solitary confinement. Solitary confinement can really drive someone mad. And in fact, as many of you know, the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture has declared that no human being should ever be subjected to more than 15 days of solitary confinement. And quite frankly, three days starts to permanently deteriorate the human spirit. So the fact that Maroon continues to stay strong throughout that just inhumane torture for, for all of these decades is a testament to him, a testament to our movement, and a testament to what he stands for. But we can't act like he's made a steal. It takes its toll. The fact that he can stay strong during a visit doesn't mean that when he goes back to that cell that he doesn't suffer some of the degradation, the inhumanity, and, and the deterioration that anybody who's subjected to that um, goes through. So I'm really honored to be able to be here to speak about who he is and what he's about. And I'm hoping that in some small way, what I've shared with you helps to build more resolve, that you can take these few comments and share them with others who are not able to be here today to help them to understand how extremely important it is that we band together and not stop until we have him, not only out in general population, but in the audience. Yes. That's what I want to see one day. Russell and Shirley, in the audience. Thank you very much.